John Buchan is from the Charm Offensive and believes in using comedy to write amazing cold emails. He's famous for sending a drunk cold email at three o'clock in the morning that ended up landing a bunch of enterprise clients. And I wanted to have him on to talk about his strategy, what he's doing on Facebook with the Facebook group, and get some more info on Charm Offensive. So if that sounds interesting to you, you're gonna love today's interview. Let's go. This video is brought to you by Cold Email University, the easiest way to learn cold email and start booking massive deals for your agency or software. Before we get going, if you wouldn't mind smashing that like button to encourage the YouTube algorithm to promote this video, it really helps the channel. And also subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so that you can be notified every time we release a new video. All right, let's jump into it. I wanted to talk to you mostly because I'm doing this new thing where I'm doing like a community over competition thing. Meaning I was talking to a bunch of these cold email guys and I realized we all, I don't think we all hate each other, but we all feel like we can't share each other's work or talk about each other or talk to each other um, because what we're selling is so similar. So I'm taking more of a, a new approach, which is like, let's get everyone together. You know, I had you on now. I, I, I had cold email wizard on here. Like everyone's coming together. I had uh, Guillermo who runs Lemlist on here a little while ago. Oh, I like, and, he's a good guy. He's a great guy. Yeah, he's amazing. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's great to talk. I'm actually really interested and I think our audience would love your general approach. So, can we start with the drunk cold email story? Yeah, like, definitely. What's the background for anyone who hasn't heard about you before? Yeah, I was going to suggest that would be a good title for the video. Probably it's mm -hmm. uh, it's always worked. So yeah, um, a drunk cold email. Uh, I used to um, work at digital marketing agencies um, when I moved to, I moved to London in 2006 and uh, went on lots of sales pitches. So I knew how to close deals, um, but I didn't know how to open them. So I started my own agency and with my brother in 2010 and for about a year everything was great um, but then we lost three clients I had staff to payroll to meet and um, uh, I didn't know how to deal with that at the time I dealt with that in the only mature way I knew how and I got blind drunk and decided to write the most write the most absurd cold email I could come up with because um, I knew what other people were sending because even though I ran a digital marketing agency I would get cold emails off from me digital marketing because the people's targeting was not uh, probably the best. So wrote probably, the, I just thought, what's the most different? I, I can't remember much about that night, but uh, I remember thinking, what's the most different thing I can send? And I wrote the drunk cold email and in the morning I was still tipsy enough to think it was a wise idea to send this completely irreverent email to senior decision makers of some of the world's largest brands. And then uh, to my amazement, it worked. I got responses that said, Things like I never replied to cold emails, but I had to reply to yours, or I've not replied to an unsolicited approach in 19 years, but I had to reply to yours. And my personal favorite, which was just succinctly said, my colleague forwarded me your spam email, and we would like to meet you to discuss opportunities, which I just think is a great response. And then I realized every time I sent this email, uh, the same thing would happen, gushing responses and offers of sales calls and meetings. And then I realized, uh, we won our first gargantuan client, Symantec. It was the most money I'd ever seen. And we had to get PR coverage for them. And their PR department either had done nothing or had just sent uh, generic press releases. So we, our content needed to get published by big websites. Or they, they told us, you know, we're not going to stick with you for uh, more than a quarter. So I went into the office on a Saturday and sent a similar email to the, uh, the editor of VentureBeat. And we got them featured in VentureBeat, the, the infographic we made, and then loads of other sites covered it. And that's when I realized, oh, you can use this style of writing, this irreverent style of writing, this disarming candor approach for any request that you've got in business, uh, any kind of cold pitching. And uh, I'd used it to get people to events, to get my friends as many job interviews, at, even if they've not worked in the profession before. Um, to, then later, when I started the Charm Offensive Group in 2017, March 2017, I used it to get myself on loads of podcasts because I needed to build an audience. I hadn't got any money <laughs> and uh, that helped me grow my audience. And um, now I get, I used to collect the screenshots of these gushing responses to cold emails. What I love about that is, or one, one of the, I love basically everything about what you just said, <laughs> but one of the big <laughs> things is we approach cold email in a very similar way from different styles, meaning just the usefulness of cold email. Like I, I, I kind of see it as like, it's the great, leveler 
doesn't matter if you're in an African country or it doesn't even matter if you're in India, it doesn't matter if you have a background in whatever, you can meet with whoever you want and do whatever you want. It's free. Yeah, and it's free Especially. and it's yeah. totally free. Yeah. I saw I a great meme so the other day. Uh, someone posted it in the... Uh... Actually, it was yours. What I'm talking about, it was your <laughs> meme. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, uh, I've come up with a uh, amazing client generation system and then the one underneath. You know, you can just email them, right? <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> okay, this is the other big question I had when I was looking at your stuff because the way that we teach cold email, it's very strategic and it's like the exact opposite. It's like personalized first line, then case study where we're talking about how we made another client very similar to them, a bunch of money, mm -hmm. then the ask. It's like three yeah. sentences, very, very simple. And your emails are, are different than that. If you could kind of explain yeah. what your emails look like and then how you Yeah, yeah. It. Well, first off, I have to say, I uh, have complete respect for your approach because I tell people now, even with uh, my style emails, if you do add elements of personalization, your response rate will be loads higher. Um, obviously, it's, it's harder to scale, but there's ways of doing it. Um, so I have to say, first off, I obviously do have respect for the super personalized approach. And uh, I, I am going to release a personalized a training on how to personalize charm templates next. That's super exciting. But my approach, the reason why it works, and I will confess, when I first sent those emails, uh, I didn't personalize anything other than their first name. Uh, then when I did the letters, it was the name and then address. So the reason they work is, especially at the time I was uh, sending cold emails, everyone else was sending the same stuff. And if you Google best cold email template, there's loads of assumptions like CEOs are busy. They only read three lines uh, and they, they just look formularic and boring. And it's like no one speaks like that. Of course, people switch off. So if everyone is sending emails like that or LinkedIn direct messages or letters or whatever the medium is, you're going to blend in. And I learned from a guy called Dave Trott, who's in a big television advertising guy. If you're doing exactly the same as everyone else, no one's going to remember your ad. And... Uh, you've got to be memorable and you've got to stand out. So my, the first line of that drunk cold email is greetings, uh, Joe, you've never heard of me. Hi, I'm John. I got your details from a list, gasp, but hey, at least you're list worthy. That's going to be worth something, right? So instead of the thing, that's something no one would really admit generally that you bought their data from a list. It's like you avoid that topic whatsoever. No, I mentioned it in the first line and then compliment them that, well, you've kind of made it in a way to be on such a list. Uh, you must be quite important as a kind of a light-hearted compliment. So that gets people to read the next line. Right? And especially if they're smiling or smirking after reading that, people are going to be more, uh, it's going to ingratiate yourself to people, that refreshing honesty, that it gives the, the rest of your email more credibility. So uh, uh, Warren Buffett starts his presentations with the worst news he has. And the reason he does that is, A, it's probably the right thing to do, but B, it gives everything else, the good news, more credibility. And that's the similar thing with this. So as well as being humorous and funny and making people smile, it's also the refreshing honesty. You appear more credible. And there are studies on uh, the intersection of humor and persuasion and humor and advertising, uh, which, I look, which I looked at. Some of them are quite old, but there are things that, that are true, like um, self-effacing humor makes the source feel more, appear more credible. Um, humor, is like physical attractiveness, if you've got that, people assume other positive traits in you. And also people are less likely to disagree with a persuasive message uh, if they're in a good mood when they're looking at it. And if you've just made them smile or smirk, they're in a good mood. So my email starts with a funny line, then there'll be a slight pitch, and then there'll be another funny line, and then there'll be a slight pitch. And it's like you're keeping them reading it. And while they're reading it, they're smirking, smiling, and laughing out loud. And they're more likely to reply and also say nice things when they reply. And that's some of the methodology uh, behind behind the emails. The other thing is I, d I still have not read a full book on copywriting. So I used to study, um, well, I used to watch from the ages of like eight to 16 or 17 till 4 a.m. Uh, Stand-up comedy, uh, sitcoms, um, and then I did a little bit of open mic comedy. I wasn't, I'm not doing it now, so it shows you how great I was, but I learned about joke writing. How do you teach what you're doing to, especially like English as a second language, like Indian, we have a ton of Indians in our course. We have yeah. a ton of people that are, you know, not plugged into the same kind of like jokes that we're listening to. Like their jokes are so edgy. <laughs> I don't know if it would work in an American <laughs> environment. <laughs> I, I think the, there's a line that I, that I like, um, I forget who I started from, but you can teach the teachables and it doesn't really matter where they're from. And so comedy, not all comedy, but a lot of comedy, uh, there's formulas to it. So, you know, the comic triple, uh, the power of three, everything is more potent in threes, but the comic triple, 
uh, you have an, a list of say three variables and the last one is the weird or silly or unusual one. So an example here is, now this isn't laugh out loud stand up comedian funny, but in the context of a business email, it's unusual and we'll get a smile. I said, if you agree to chat with me about your digital marketing needs, I will take you for coffee or lunch or tequila shots and promise to be somewhat entertaining. If you're, if, if you're lucky, I may even wear a top hat. First off, I'd love to give you some ideas you're free to steal. And so the three variables in that are uh, uh, coffee, lunch, and uh, tequila shots. And uh, tequila shots is the unusual one in a business email. You don't expect that. So you mm -hmm. can teach these formulas like the comic triple, uh, the triple reverse is another formula. So um, this is actually taken, you can imagine this at a, being introduced, if you were being introduced as a, a speaker, um, I'd like to invite someone to the stage who's witty, interesting and clever. Unfortunately, we've got John Buchan speaking. Mm -hmm. So there's three variables and then you pull the rug underneath. So in an email you put, I used to, I've got a template that say, I wanted to introduce myself in a way that makes me sound interesting, witty, and clever. Alas, I wrote this email instead. Here's a question for the audience. What do you guys think about John's strategy of a funny cold email? Is this something that you would implement? Let me know down below. Why or why not? We run from, or I've been running from competition. I know there are other people in my space that don't talk about my stuff because of this exact same thing. So I'm trying to do like a, you only get what you give type yeah. of deal. <laughs> Where, cause yeah. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna learn so much from, I know, I'm gonna learn so much from your course and then it's gonna improve the way I teach cold email. And then maybe, you know, now my now everyone's getting better at cold email because of it. Yeah, there's, there's room for all of us. Like there's a guy, yeah. and I'll mention him now. Uh, his name's John Holt, and he's a former magician and stand-up comedian. And he teaches how to write funny email. I told him to start. I was like, you're really good at this. You should do it. And he did, he got really big clients. I won't mention the names, but he got some really big names. And then he started, I said, you should sell an information product. And that seems like the most insane thing to do. Like you're helping someone that's really doing a similar thing to you. No, I've pushed him along the way. I've got him on WhatsApp. His first course has done amazing. And I'm like, yes, awesome. And I was like, get loads of social proof. There's room enough for all of us. We're never going to run out of customers with the Facebook ads and, and Google ads. And uh, I'll buy Pinterest ads if they convert. I don't care. There's, we're never going to run out of customers. There's room for all of us. So and I think it's it encouraging to be protectionist. Well, it's encouraging also the growth of the customer. So for instance, someone is in email 10K, someone's in our course, and it might even be called something different by the time the user's watching this, who knows. But somebody's in our course, they're learning this specific style of email. Yeah. Why can't they learn comedy too? You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, why can't they learn comedy too? Why can't the comedy guys learn, you know, yeah, the lead yeah, gen yeah. process this way and how to create a no-brainer offer? Like, everyone gets better. If you were learning copywriting, which I know you yeah. hate copywriting, you never buy copywriting. Oh, no, I don't hate <laughs> copywriting. I have a lot of respect for copywriters. Don't get me wrong, Colin Th Therio is okay. direct response copywriting. And I use elements of direct response copywriting on my sales pages. So I don't hate it. It's just I've, because it's so different, it stands out. I've been able to not learn a lot of the other stuff. But I have said to Colin the other day, I said, imagine if I learn a God as good as you or an, almost as good as you at the direct response stuff. Uh, imagine how powerful that would be. So I'm, I'm the same. It's like, you can keep adding to your game and I'm forever a student. I'm not, uh, I want to learn from as many sources as I can. That's how, that's how you get good at stuff. And so you can't be precious and you can't be protectionist. It's, it's better to be open and always want to get better uh, every day. I want to get better. It's so real. That's I'm trying to really try to lean into that so hard. Cause like, yeah. okay, you're trying to learn design. You're going to buy books or courses or whatever from like 30 people. You're not just going to buy one course. And yet in the marketing space, yeah. it seems like all the gurus are like, I'm the only guy you need to buy from. Yeah. It's uh, I think that's faulty, faulty yeah. logic. I can understand, maybe understand why they do, but I'm just not, I'm not built. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not built in that way. That's interesting. Okay. Is there anything else I should have asked that I didn't ask? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, I could ramble for ages about this stuff. But, uh, <laughs> I really, I really enjoy the conversation, and uh, I really appreciate the invite. Um, I, I, I love what you've done with your channel. I've got aspirations myself to do a, a YouTube channel, not on the same topic. Um, I want to do interviews and stuff with. Basically, I just want to speak to people that I really look up to, and then gradually graduate to just super, super famous people that I really, really like, like or look up to. But uh, so yeah, I'll probably have to uh, message you and learn some tricks about how to grow a YouTube channel because you're clearly doing something right. And uh, yeah, yeah, I really appreciate the invite. All right, John, where should people go if they want to stay in touch or if they want to buy your course or whatever? Cool. So the website is charm-offensive.co.uk. That's charm-offensive.co.uk. If you can add a link in the description. Uh, uh, and also uh, .co.uk, so .co.uk for the Americans that might not be 
okay with the UK domain extension. Also, if you search for Charm Offensive on Facebook, it's the Facebook group with, at the time of saying this, about 15,000 members, I think, in there. Uh, if you're not on those two, you can search for John Buchan on LinkedIn. You'll know um, who I am because my profile picture is me rescuing a baby and a basket of kittens from a burning building, uh, which may or may not be a photoshopped image. Uh, but those are the three best ways. The best is just to go to the website, though, charm offensive uk. All right, John, I think thanks for being done there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's really good. Let's talk about cold email university. If you want the easiest way to learn cold email, I've talked about this a million times. Cold email is a skill that will change your life for the better. Imagine being able to contact anyone. If you want to sell a $10,000 deal, you can with cold email. If you want to get your dream job, you can with cold email. If you want to sell your software, you can do it with cold email and cold email university is the course for you. It's all of our insights from hundreds of students and millions of dollars generated via cold email, our seven figure agencies built on cold email, and most of what we do is built on this skill. The course will show you how to write your perfect cold email, how to take your current case studies and make them amazing, and how to improve your campaigns so that you can start booking massive deals right now today. If that sounds interesting to you, go on over to coldemailuniversity.com and check out that course right now, coldemailuniversity.com. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to smash that like button to encourage this type of content on YouTube. Subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. I'm Alex Berman.